we're doing is we're investigating the preservation of DNA and microbes within water inclusions embedded in minerals that have been deposited over the last uh, million years, and in some cases much longer than that. Well, there's been a lot of work on this stuff done for decades, and people have been claiming that bacteria get trapped inside salt crystals for, you know, at least 50 years. But nobody's ever really proven it that the actual microbes are inside the salt crystals. And so what we did, the first big step we did was we actually saw these microbes under the microscope for real. And we were the, sort of the first ones to really identify these microbes living in very ancient salts. And when we started seeing them, we began to think all about all the possibilities of how you can study them. The things that are embedded in these, these water inclusions include uh, archaebacteria, bacteria, uh, fungi, algae, and, and viruses. So uh, all manner of unicellular organisms are embedded in these, these uh, water inclusions. The big deal for us is to try to figure out how long things can stay trapped in crystals. Now remember, these crystals are deep down inside the earth. It would be a breakthrough in biology to really understand how long they can survive for and um, how they do it. We have a core that goes from the present to a million or two million years ago, and we're pulling out organisms from the present 50,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, 300,000 years ago, a million years ago, and if they're the same organism, we can watch them evolve over that period of time. And the relevance for this is when we're exploring other parts of the solar system, we're going to be looking at very old deposits on the surfaces of other planets in, in the solar system, Mars for example, and we may be looking at similar deposits there where we would be exploring for life there. In addition to what, what Tim has already talked about, uh, the big goals of, of maybe exploring life on other planets, um, there are a lot of different interesting questions that we can think about in terms of changing uh, communities over geological time, how these communities are responding to changing environmental conditions, and how the composition of these, these communities change. If we have organisms that were alive over millions of years, and we can actually see how they changed in real time. And this is one thing that this project potentially gives us that, that no one else has.